All right, now that laning phase is in the books, let's talk a little bit about team fighting phase. Right now, for both blue side and purple side, we have three people bot lane. For purple side and blue side, we have one and basically a half a person top lane versus two people. I was originally bot lane, but I want to make my way top lane because I want to help my top laner cover top. I also want to kill this Nocturne. Him having oracles is bugging the crap out of me. I always hate that as a support when another person on the other team has eight oracles. He's only killed one ward on Baron, which means I want to kill him to not only get rid of the kind of map control I'll have due to vision, but also to make him waste his money on oracles. So I'm kind of dilly daddling because I'm kind of being indecisive for some reason. I trust Graves and Annie to hold bot lane. I don't trust Shaco. He hasn't proven to me that he can make wise decisions yet. So let's just hope Shaco doesn't goof it up for us. But I told my top laner, go on to them. Once they go into tower, start attacking them. I'll come up. I have ulti, I have exhaust. So we start attacking them. He lays down a ton of damage. We pop the spell shield. I ulti both of them. In hindsight, I probably could have ulti a little bit earlier. I exhaust him. I eat him to keep him slowed. We get the kill. We also end up getting the kill on the J, so I'm going to transition bot lane. Tark runs up, makes a huge mistake, and he gets a good ulti. That W, I believe, her W itself, I believe, popped the stun, which actually was kind of witty. I don't play any much, so I don't know the kind of inner workings of Annie, but that was a nice little play by her. She stuns Tark under tower. Oriana gets a really good ulti onto all four of them, but they end up blowing flash or getting out of the ulti itself and not dying because of it. Shay goes beasting it up, like always. And Graves gets some nice little damage onto Oriana. Graves be driven being so far back. That flash, that flash done. But she dies to freaking minions. Driven being so far back basically allowed Graves to get that free damage onto Oriana. Overall, that whole little team fight-ish little phase right there was a 1 for 5 for us. We end up picking up mid tower and also getting Dragon off of it. Plus, we killed Nocturne who had Oracles. That was a pretty big money swing. We're now pretty much even in gold. The problem with our team and why we're much weaker though hasn't been due to the fact that we are always behind in gold. We've only been behind in gold about 5,000 to about 6,000 gold at the max the whole game. The problem more comes to the fact that they just have a stronger team composition than we do. Late game, Sona is a bit better than Tark. They're both probably, they don't scale amazingly well as a support in my opinion due to the fact that they kind of have these one little gimmicks that make them strong and Whenever you kill my ward like that as a support, it just it's so sad for me. But they both kind of scale meh. Nocturne scale is infinitely better than Shaco. And yeah, Oriana at this point is much stronger than Annie. Annie has a stun, very strong stun. Oria has her ulti as well. Problem is that Oriana has been doing consistent damage with her Q and W post ulti. Annie kind of just blows all of her burst and kind of just kills one or two people. Oriana does consistent damage over the whole team fight. Right here, they traded Tower for an AD carry who has a kill streak. In my opinion, Shaco should have just man mode it and let his AD carry live, but he ends up just running out, letting his AD carry die, and Oriana also picks up the kill, which gives her a nice little chunk of change. If they were smarter and if Jace was with them, they could push on this tower really easily. And for some reason they still play really scared. I don't know why they play so scared in this in this whole game. They have a stronger team. Shaco's kind of just there. He's just a body at this point in time. He's not really a huge presence in any team fight or even in anything <laughs> whatsoever. He's kind of just there, kind of just doing stuff, but I don't like Shaco. And I think my heal saves him, which isn't even worth slowing down for because it's fucking Shaco. I don't like Shaco. I like I love Shakos who are good. I don't like Shakos who kind of are bleh. Uh, I know Shaco's hard to play, but whatever. At this point, Oriana gets a really bad ulti on the one person. I don't know why she did that. I don't really get what that was. Maybe it was her Nocturne communicating that he wanted to go back in. But I told my top laner, go in. If she doesn't have an ulti, she doesn't have too much health. But he kind of goes a little bit in early. That's kind of my bad for calling that. I don't have an ulti. Or I do have an ulti myself. But we could have made a play happen, potentially. Because she doesn't have a huge teamfight ulti for them. But... Mm, kind of messes up. Nobody else is in position. If we were all in team chat, we could have probably played that better. Uh, but just me and my top laner being in uh, Skype doesn't really help the team overall. That does it. So, I'm kind of being stupid at this point. In this point in the game, I should probably buy an Oracles. But I go back and buy Pink Wards. Pink Wards are decent for early game. Somewhat decent for late game for keeping up map control. But an Oracles would be a little bit stronger. 
in season three or at least preseason as it is now it's probably better to buy pink wards i think they've gotten a little bit of a buff with the nerf to oracles but uh pink wards at this point in time for this what the game was which is season two buying pink wards excessively is kind of bad in the long run due to the fact that it's uh a poor investment when oracles is forever until you die at least and you shouldn't die post laning phase of a support in my opinion because you should have proper positioning to not die but we keep kind of playing around uh, also I make bad choices this game and I kind of ward really terribly because we're kind of so pushed up we don't have much control over here I'm kind of warding just this area itself I should be warding up in here which you'll see the reason why in a bit I go pink Baron kill this ward at this point in time, as Draven, as an AD carry, when you see somebody kill a ward, you probably shouldn't go bot lane. He got really greedy and, he, greedy and he wanted to go bot lane to get all this farm. As an AD carry, showing yourself bot lane is a good little giveaway for the other team to start Baron, especially when they have no map vision. So we start Baron. Nocturne knows something's up. He smells something fishy. He's pinging it. He wants them to go over. This team's kind of just going mid lane, though. They've again showed themselves mid lane. We feel safe because we don't know where Nocturne is, but there's no vision in the Baron pit. We end up picking up Baron. This is a point in which being a support has huge, huge impact on the game. In this t kind of phase of the game, having a, a support who's good, I'm not saying I'm good, but having a support who wards and dewards can have a huge impact on the game. But we make a bad play here which I'll show you why as I switch vision. We see Orianna out of position. We want to go onto Orianna. It really goes onto Orianna. I go up, I want ulti her. She flashes. I ulti late. I only get one person my ulti. As Sona, getting one person your ulti, especially somebody like Nocturne, is pretty freaking terrible. That's a huge waste of a very strong team by ulti. We also have no vision over in here. I'll switch it over to all. They're all in this bush, except for Draven. Two people are in this bush. Oriana, or Oriana, the person we want to go on the most, is in the bush. We don't have any vision on it, pretty much due to me. So, we get an ulti onto two people, basically stun two people we don't really want to stun. And Nocturne ulti comes in. No vision on anybody. Plus, the Oriana ulti is going to catch four people out of position. And, yeah. They get a W onto us too, does a ton of damage, we get Draven ultied, he pops back in. Just a really bad exchange, a bad team fight due to lack of vision. As I said before, a good support can pretty much win you the game or lose you the game. Or a bad support can lose you the game. That is a play in which a, I made a bad decision as a support and had terrible map vision. Only having map vision is okay, or only having map vision in this area is okay because of the fact that we kind of just want to get Baron, and to be fair, we haven't been up in this area too much to really ward it. At the same time, though, it lost us a team fight, and I should have had us back off, because we had we lost it due to the lack of vision. However, I make it up here by allowing my AD carry, or my top laner to go in. I exhaust Draven. He's doing by far the most damage in this team fight. Jace goes on to me, he kills me. I'm still worth a pretty penny because I'm not, I haven't died an absurd amount. However, my top laner gets two kills out of it. Would he got a third kill had he got more Phage procs or maybe had a flash as well. So, Jace flashes away, not enough Phage procs, ba doop ba doop. And yeah. That team fight could have potentially thrown the game had this other, been, other team been a little bit better, but they also made a bad decision by going on to us uh, over here and giving up two kills to Relia. I really have skills really well in the late game. Oriana skills one late, late game. Tarak and Sona kind of skill, whatever. But we're back to farming again. Back to ye olde farming. As you see, there's not much map vision anywhere, really. I build a reverie because at this point, initiating may be kind of more effective for us. We're kind of getting to the point where we can start winning some team fights. But I'm still warding a little bit more defensively. Wards over here in this position and kind of like on our side of the map, look at the river as a line, basically. It's a segmented line that kind of cuts up each area. So this is their side, this is our side. Warding here, warding right there, warding kind of like in our general vicinity, in our area, is more of an expensive setup for wards. Offensive warding would be over in this area. 
I'm still boarding quite defensively because I still don't feel like we can really win a team fight. Team fighting for us at this point kind of comes down to catching them out of position and making a play off of that. Or just hoping all of our CC lines up and we insta-gib half of the team. Because we have a lot of AOE CC. We have a Sona ulti and we have an Annie ulti. That's kind of what team fighting comes down for, or comes down to as us, or for us right now. Luckily we do have Aurelia who can initiate team fights quite well. She can jump in and take away a lot of the focus off of us. That's kind of nice because we don't have anybody else on the team who can really do that because we have a Shaco. So. Back to farming though. Still farming. He gets in our oracles. Torek should have been the one getting oracles at this at this point in time. Pretty much past laning phase, I feel like it's definitely on the support shoulders to get oracles because somebody like Nocturne has to dive in to be effective. Kind of not always smart to have oracles on Nocturne at this late in the game. Better on Torek, who probably won't be running up initiating a team fight by just diving in. That's just my general opinion on that matter, though. Another big play that they make or don't make is not pushing this open inhibitor. I don't see any reason to go for a long sustained siege on a tower when you have an open inhibitor. That to me just seems a little bit silly. But they play just as scared as we do. They don't want to make a mistake and lose the game. But they also have two GAs. We only have one. Just in terms of the... As you can see here, I don't think he wants to go in. I think he had vision, but I don't think he wants to go in. Um, they have two GAs, we have one. In terms of how many lives they have, they could beat us in a team fight very easily. But they still play pretty defensively. Nocturne ulti is down. That's kind of a huge part of their initiation. Is Nocturne kind of just going in. That kind of sets up Jace going in. Orianna putting the ball into him. And getting a nice little ulti off on a lot of people. Tark is more at this point for catching people out of position and peeling. He has an amazing, very easy peel. But kind of isn't really team fight centric at this point in time. But ye olde farming. So much fun to watch. I just want them to go in and kill us. I don't know. At this point, I'm bored of watching us dilly daddle around. But Shaco makes a nice play here. Shaco's like, just gonna man mode in. Knows that they're around there. Pings for us. We know they're around there now. They go B because of it. That was a nice little play by Shaco. Kind of helped us to get vision. However, a nice little team fight comes up pretty soon. This team fight basically decides the game. I wore it to be cheeky and to be a cool kid. And Oriana makes a really bad play here. She throws a ball, gets four people in ulti, but nobody follows up on it. It really just goes man mode in. That allows me to get ulti onto all four people. So as I said before, I really could take a lot of the heat off of pretty much everybody else on the team. She can go in and initiate. She also pops Randuins. I get an ulti on the four people. Any flash ultis gets another huge ulti on the four people. We get the Graves ulti on all four people. We get the Aurelia ulti on all four people. And we just blow them up. Jace dives onto Graves. I end up exhausting good old Jace. And good, that looks so ugly in slow motion. Nocturne dives back in, but at this point, there's no follow up from the team. We killed everybody else so fast and made them so low that there's no follow up. We all just collapse back onto Jace and Nocturne. At this point, Oriana kind of initiating really poorly, and Aurelia is still just being an absolute monster and just wrecking everybody over there. Pretty much allows us to target back onto Jace and good old Nocturne, kill both of them, and pretty much ace them. So at this point in the game, an ulti like that can more or less win you the team fight. The fact that we had Aurelia who just jumped in, pretty much man moded, and took the heat off of all of us. She allowed them to, she didn't really allow them to, but they all clumped around her. Except for Jace, Jace was actually probably in a little bit of a better position. Allowed me to get an ulti on the five people. Annie followed up with an amazing flash ulti that got four people into her ulti. Graves again came up and got his ulti on all four people as well. I really ulti on all four people. All of our AoE kind of meshed up and collided at just the perfect time, really. Small things like that in solo queue can pretty much win you games. That's why AoE team comps are the easiest to execute and probably the best for 5v5 in terms of like ranked and such. Um, just very easy, just all mash buttons that kind of align things and hope they go perfectly. But we ended up putting the game this fight being kind of behind. At this point in time, Sona had a bigger impact on that team fight than Tara could ever dream of having. Just because that ulti kind of pretty much secured the team fight. 
Things like that are why you should stay positive and ranked, basically. Keep your team alive, keep them afloat, kind of mentally as well as physically, I guess. Uh, ward, de-ward as best you can. Try and make the correct calls and hope the guy really jumps in and basically beast mode <laughs> goes beast mode and clumps them up so you can get a perfect ulti on everybody. So thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully you learned a little, little bit about Sona, Santa, Santa Claus, and uh, I'll just talk to you guys next time.